Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands up. Father, we thank you so much for this meeting. Thank you for the anointing that's on this ministry. Thank you for the anointing on me in these lips of clay that I speak this word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness. Asking you to think through my mind, speak to my lips, and this word will come forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force. Now we give you the praise and call it all done and expect signs, wonders, and miracles. In the name of Jesus, can somebody shout amen? amen. Take a seat, please. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I heard it up here first. No, I heard it up here first. Up here. Where is it? Come in. Come in. Come in. Yeah. I heard it up here somewhere. Up here. All right. Come here. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm going to peel you off a hundred. Amen. Hey, bless you. Give God a praise and a thanksgiving. Woo. You know what I'd do if I wasn't saved? Get saved. I'd get saved. Woo. All right. Let's uh, set my clock here. Praise God. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, don't worry about it. Right, right. Okay. I want to be invited back. Praise God. Okay. Let's, uh, I got, uh, I've got two times that I'm going to be with you. I call it a drive by. And, uh, so if you'll open your Bibles, please to Romans chapter four. Romans chapter four. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Mm, mm, mm. My goodness. Ah, boy, I see now. <laughs> you can be prepared, but you come up here, it look like you gonna have to go for yourself up here. Praise <laughs> God. Okay, this is Romans chapter four. Now, <clears throat> this, what we want to do is want to talk about restoring the years. Restoring the years. <clears throat> In Romans chapter four, let's start reading here at verse 17. It says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, and he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. What God had promised, God was able also to perform. Now, I want you to underline that. He was strong in faith. He was strong in faith. Now you'll find that whenever you are strong in faith, you will have it any way you want it. Things will happen the way you want them to happen. You want to be strong in faith. Now we just Remember that because we're going to come back to that and deal with that. But this, this having it the way you want it is, is, is very key because there are some things out here that um, really are trying to manipulate and govern the church. And it's time for us to have it the way we want it. Let's go over now to um, 
Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. You know, I just want us to just take a pause for a moment here and just thank Brother and Sister Copeland for this meeting. I, uh, I needed I needed a ministry, needed some money because we were going to buy some property. Needed, I needed three and a half million dollars. <throat> and uh, now it's not a commercial. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. And I asked God, I said, what do you do? He says, sow seed. So I guess you know where we sowed some seed. <laughs> because there's a man of God that needs a He's the airplane. And uh, I want to just let you know that today we're closing on that deal, three and a half million dollars cash. Now, now I really want to talk about this because when you're strong in faith, you're going to have it the way you want it. Because the way I wanted it was not just to get to three and a half million. The way I wanted it to get to three and a half million by July. See, that, that just shut the lion's mouth right there. No, no, you can have it the way you want it. You can have it the time you want it in. What he did, that's what David did. He said, Goliath, this day. He didn't say next Tuesday. Sometime in the future. I hope by and by. So this day. The Lord's going to deliver you into my hands. And I'm going to cut your head off. Didn't he say that? And, and, and move, move out of the way. Uh, I'm going to give that whole army to the buzzards. He had it the way he wanted it. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, <clears throat> this, this teaching on faith, well, I'm, let me, I'm, I'm, I'm going all kinds of ways here. Let me, I'm trying to stay close to the notes. Um, <clears throat> I was just looking at some of the things <clears throat> that in the body of Christ, we have to make sure that we, we don't leave these first principles that God has taught us about. You know, faith, I mean, that faith is key. You, you, you really can't get your promises except by faith. God not, does nothing apart from faith. And so, I mean, the first thing you should do once you come into the kingdom, got born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, next thing you should do, develop that faith. Because yeah. yes. that's going to be the tool by which you use to get everything accomplished. Yes, it's going to be faith. Amen. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the anointing, but that faith is key for that anointing to function. Amen. Amen. Remember the woman had the issue of blood, came up to Jesus, pressed her way, touched his garment. The Bible says virtue flow, anointing, power. Well, once it flowed, he said, daughter, thy what? Faith. faith has made you whole. He didn't say my anointing. He said, thy faith has made you whole. But the anointing drove out the sickness. But the anointing flowed by faith. And I'm just saying, we can't leave on... Wednesday, our midweek service, sometimes when I'm in town, I preach on saved and sanctified. That's what I'm preaching on now. And, and you know, at, when I was a kid, I was brought up in Tuskegee, Alabama. And so a lady used to keep us after school when we were young in elementary school because mom and dad worked. And so I just noticed there was a church down the street from her house that was real loud. <laughs> And I said, uh, Ms. Griffin, what kind of church is that? She said, that's a sanctified church. I said, what do you mean sanctified? Oh, those are holy rollers. I said, holy rollers, what do they do? Well, they'll put you in a sack and roll you down the aisle. 
Well, well when you said that, I kind of stayed away from it. I said, no, nah, I, I don't want to be a victim down there. So, but sanctification, meaning that I've, I'm taking on the mentality of the kingdom. See, I'm seeing things and doing things and saying things God's way. I wrote something down. Could Brother Copeland preach a masterpiece last night? Uh, I wrote something down here. Confession. If you can talk, you can win. That's what I wrote down last night. If you can talk, you can win. Faith is a decision. Well, I, I'm going to leave that because I've I got a lot of things here that I want to cover. But anyway, that's sanctified, meaning that I'm doing things God's way. What, what happened to the blood? That blood is so powerful. Watch this. It'll cleanse your conscience. See, the Bible talks about in Hebrews chapter 9, if you come into the kingdom, then you need to do the work of God. And you need to do it without guilt. See, how many people, I don't know about you, but I had bad road behind me. I mean, I, when I came into the kingdom, there was some stuff I needed to forget. And let me tell you, here it comes. You know, the blood cleansing things, wiping things out. The power of the blood. How about oil? I remember when I first started in uh, Chicago, I said, okay. I said, hey, I said, uh, we was having service at just a little storefront church. And here we were in there and we had a prayer meeting going on. And the lady, uh, again, broke in the front door while we were in prayer. She said, who is the pastor in here? I said, I'm the pastor. She said, well, I need to see you. I said, you see me now, lady. You know, you got to be tough right down there where I was in there. That was tough. That was Dodge City down in there where I was. And... Uh, <clears throat> She said, the drug dealers have taken over my, my our block and, and we can't, the kids can't go play. The, 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 all the parents are afraid. What are you going to do about it? See, because the church, wherever it goes, it becomes your jurisdiction. Yes. Nothing is allowed to happen in that place without your permission. So I said, okay, lady. <clears throat> I said, uh, get in the circle. We got in the circle and prayed. Like he said that about Honda. Prayed in the spirit. Then receive from God. See, because every problem you'll have has already been solved before you were born. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what did I have to do? <clears throat> I got the wisdom of God. I said, uh, uh, lady, God is telling me to take this bottle of oil, bless it, and tell you to pour it down your street. Well, give it here. You know, when you're desperate, you'll take all kinds of weird advice. <laughs> he took that oil, poured it down that street, came back about four or five days later, to pass it. Guess what? Smiling. I said, what, lady? She said, the drug dealers came out the next day for one hour, left, and never came back. Well, I knew that because the word will not return unto you void. All right, all right. Hey, y'all, y'all with me now? But how do I access that kind of wisdom? I access it by faith. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He said that he has laid up sound wisdom for the righteous. Say amen. amen. There is not a problem you have right now that God has not already solved. Well, what happened? We have got away from some of the basics. What, what, what are we doing? And now, and I'll put it in my notes here somewhere. Here's the world. And the world is busy trying to... Uh, Oh, what did I put down here? The world is busy trying to, hey, I got it some here somewhere. Amen. It, it's in my notes. Flow. Flow. Praise God. 
I, I want I want to just find that because that that was a key point because because the world is busy trying to compete with the church is is busy trying to um, I use the term here and I want to get it but it's busy trying to um, 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 it, it's busy trying to remove the church from its place of of dominion and power in your I'm I'm, I'm saying this this is I mean, they're, they're creating communities themselves now. I mean, they're, I mean, they, I mean, you, I looked at, the other day, I mean, I heard the guy speak it on, on a business channel. He said, Apple has got $250 billion cash. Man, with $250 billion, billion, you can tell a city what to do. Yes, sir. Come on. No, no, no. He said, we're supposed to be the head. Say amen. amen. Folks, I believe the church should be running with a no budget anointing. Amen. Now, I'm, I'm just saying something happened to the culture. Something happened. Now, I want, want you to see a couple of things. <clears throat> because, uh, you know, I remember foot washing. I remember I came one time. That's when I first got saved. Went to the church that night. They had a night service. I said, what, what, what are we doing tonight? And, and I said, why are all these people here? They said, they're having a foot washing. I said, a foot washing? She said, yeah. I said, what are you doing, a foot washing? She said, well, you have to wash somebody's feet. I said, I ain't washing nobody's feet. Hey, that ain't me, homie. And so, and so I left. <clears throat> now, I'm, I'm just talking about some of the things that were differentiating the church from the world. See? And now kind of got in this thing and trying to do some things the world's way, competing with the world, and you can't do that. Not on that basis you can't, because when you're dealing with the world, God, uh, the, the enemy uses spiritual power to win. And the only way you're going to win against the devil is get God on your side. Yeah. Yeah. Using spiritual power to win. And I had to find out, remember when Moses went down there to Egypt? The first thing he did, Pharaoh pulled out his sorcerers. Am I right about that? Man, they began to do some things. But I'm telling you, Moses won out because he was using the power of God. But the Bible talks about by faith, Moses, by faith, Abraham by faith. You see what I'm saying? Now with this, these two times I'm going to have you, I really want to bring you into a place where you see this meeting as a time that is going to build sufficient amount of faith that you can do anything you like to do in your life. I'm talking about the harvest is going to come up quickly. I'm talking about when you hear, now I'm I'm prayed to get this. When you hear these teachings that you're going to be hearing this week, you will never be the same again. You will, you, you, you will, you will develop faith that when you decree a thing, it shall come to pass. Glory to God in heaven. All right. Now let's read this Ephesians in, in chapter six and look at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, come on, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. All right. Okay, let's start with Adam. Okay, in the beginning, well, let's go back to Genesis, please. In the beginning, nope, nope, nope. I have one more scripture I want to read before we, we do that. Let's go to Joel, jo, J-O-E-L, Joel. <clears throat> We're talking about restoring the years. <clears throat> With, in this, this is subtopic. We're talking about developing strong faith. Say developing strong faith. Yeah, talking about restoring years. Now watch this. 
This is found in Joel chapter two. I'll start reading here at verse three. Be glad, ye children, then you children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, which has given you the former rain, and he will cause to you for you to come down the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Now, if you look at the former rain, latter rain, rain means in this particular situ uh, context, it's talking about the anointing. Former rain, the former rain for gathering, the latter rain for beautifying. All right, look what he says in verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army, which I said among you, and you shall eat plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be what? Ashamed. So the anointing that's going to come on the church in the last hour is going to wash away all your shame. Anything that has been making you ashamed in the last days, this is what's going to happen through that anointing. All right. And then let's go on down here. Now he said, I'm going to restore to you the years. So let's start Stop just thinking about in our lives that God's going to restore in our lives some years. Let's think about God's going to restore the years of humanity. He's going to go all the way back to Eden. He's going to restore us back there. Now, if you look at Jesus' life, he was the sample son. He was the one who came to show you how the original Adam operated. Look what he said in verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. All right. Let's see what we got here to work with. My Lord. So now I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All right. Let's go back to Adam and see what happened. If you look back here in Genesis chapter, let's go back to Genesis chapter one. All right. In Genesis chapter one, and God said, and God said, and God said, and he created everything. Verse 26. And God said, let us make man and I am it after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And as our late brother Charles Capps used to say, you have dominion over creeps. All right. Now, let's look at this word dominion and see what it means. It means sovereign or supreme authority. The word dominion. Sovereign or supreme authority, because you don't know what the words mean, then you can't get an understanding of the word. It means the power of governing or controlling, the power of governing or controlling. Wherever you have dominion, you govern it and control it. It also means the power to direct, control, or to use or dispose of at your pleasure to use or dispose of at your pleasure. Go in town, you two disciples, you'll see a donkey tied up on time and bring him to me. Now, if anybody asks you, what are you doing with my donkey? You tell them the Lord has need of it. <laughs> All right. Are, are you following what I'm saying? I'm saying once you come into the kingdom, once you're on assignment from God, everything is going to be restored because Adam was the one who was over it all, not the devil or his people. Adam was. And before it's over, God's going to put everything back in control of this group. He calls the church. Say amen here. We are not going to be leave, don't beam me up spot because your rent is due. He's not, that's not going to happen. Jesus said, don't pray that we take you out of the world, but pray that we send you and keep you in the world and keep you above the evil. Say amen to that. Amen. All right. So you're not going anywhere. You're going to stay right here. All right. Now, <clears throat> look what it said in verse 28. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish and sea, over the fowl of the air and over every yes, living thing that moveth upon the earth. All right, now I'm not going to preach on that blessing. I'd like to just get into that and woo hoo hoo. But let's just go. I'm going to just put my phone in my pocket here. Goes off. We'll all hear it. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Okay. All right, where are we now? Now here's Adam. 
Now God is making this man a duplicate of himself. The thing of it is that Adam now is under God's authority. He and God were not two, they were one. So now he is under God's authority. Now God puts him in the garden and in this garden, he gives them assignment. And in that assignment, now he is saying in chapter two and verse 18, and Lord God said, it's not good to man should be alone. I'll make a help meet for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every, every beast of the field and, uh, follow, and, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Now, he, 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 he named them what God named them. This, this, is, this, is where we, this is where we break camp right here. We name them what God named them because he had the same mental frequency as God. He was on the same frequency as God. So as he named all those animals, he named them, retained the names, so forth and so on. Now here's Adam, he's, dom he's dominating this earth. Now, God gives him a prohibition, tells him don't eat of a certain tree. Well, you know what happened. Eve was tempted and, and then Adam ate and Eve ate. And now, here comes God. But they didn't know God any longer. And so now God <clears throat> is calling for them. He said, Adam, where are you? He's not talking about his location now. See, he's He's talking about his position in the earth. He's talking about this place that he's placed him as federal headship over everything in the earth. But now Adam has fallen. Now Satan is taking control. Now just stay with me because this is going to get good. So Adam now runs from God. God, of course, gets Adam. So God, so Adam lost some things. Adam lost his fellowship with God. He lost his ability to receive from God. He, he lost his glory. He lost the ability for God to provide for him. And lastly, but certainly not least, he lost his mind. He lost his mind. He no longer has a righteous mind. Now, <clears throat> he went out and tried to clothe himself. And he clothed himself in a fig leaf suit. Now, <clears throat> Now, I don't know what you think about a fig leaf suit. <laughs> but if I saw somebody walking in here <laughs> in a fig leaf suit, I'd say that brother is out of his mind. <laughs> now, you think about it. It doesn't have to be a fig leaf suit. It could be a hairdo. I'm going to get personal here in just a minute. <laughs> it could be the way we dress. Yeah. Yeah. I said, man, watch this. How did he think of that? <laughs> well, what was she thinking when she did that? <laughs> Am I right about it? <laughs> Y'all get quiet over now. Oh. Get... All right. Now he lost the frequency. See, now what Joel says is we are going to restore the years. I got to get some stuff back because my man and my woman are out of their mind. 
Now I got to get all this back. Because because they lost that and they lost fellowship, they lost the, the rulership, they lost the, the ability to receive from me, they lost, they, it's lost. So now God has to restore the years that the king of war was in. Are y'all with me so far? All right. So he's working on a plan called the plan of redemption. So God now is going to st- restore Adam's mental and physical dignity. He's going to restore it. So the main way he's going to restore it is on down the line, there's one coming called Christ. And he's going to redeem us from the curse by becoming a curse for us. That the blessing of Abraham, that all that God intended for man to have and to be will come back on him. Now the trick of the devil is to try to get you born again and leave the rest of your stuff. But once you get born again, everything else comes with a package. In, in, <laughs> in Psalm chapter 103, he says, forget not all your benefits. See, everything comes with that package. Complete restoration of your body. Complete restoration of your home. Complete restoration. Everything comes with it. And the devil is a negotiator. His job is to negotiate you out of your rights. You have a right to be healed. Come on over here. Revelation chapter five. I believe this is the right bunch. Praise God. Revelation chapter five. And look what he says here, starting in Revelation chapter five and starting at verse 11. And I beheld and I heard a voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them were 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb. That's Jesus who was slain for us. That's the blood to receive what? power, keep going, riches, keep going, wisdom, keep going, strength, yep, keep going, honor, come on, glory and blessing. This is your inheritance package. When you go to that job, they have a benefits package. When you come to Christ, you have a benefits package. That everything in that I've just read is yours and it's been bought and paid for. Now in this, <laughs> this, this devil doesn't want you to have this. It's already yours and it's already got your name on it and it's already paid for. So his job is to deceive you or put up a fight. And the Bible says, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but with what? Principalities against principalities and powers. And I'm saying that you've got to develop some faith so that you can take this. Because faith is the only way you're going to defeat the devil. Do you with me? All right. Let's start building faith for this. I want to start with wisdom first. All of these are sermons, preachers, every one of them. Now, let's look at wisdom. Let's look at strength. Okay. All right. Let's take Samson. Okay. Now, 
What happened? God started with Abraham, and here he starts getting this, this likeness of, of, of Adam back upon mankind. He starts with Abraham. But let's just take Samson. Let's just take him for example. Now I looked at a scripture. <clears throat> I want you to look at it with me. Go over to Judges chapter 16, please. How many are ready for the truth? Yeah. I mean the whole truth. Yeah. And nothing but the truth. Yeah. Judges 16. All right. I want you to see this. He says this in Judges 16. He says in verse, glory to God. I'll start here at verse, glory to God. Hold on just a minute. Do I have the right place? Yes, I do. All right, Judges 16. He says in verse 18, and when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the Lord of the Philistines saying, come up this once for he has shown me all his heart. Then the Lord of the Philistines came up to her and brought money in their hands and she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. His strength went from him. And she said, glory to God. Now, wait, 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 hold it. Here is Samson, too close to the world. Now he's giving away secrets. <clears throat> Didn't know that Delilah was hired. But he told her something that was key. Glory to God. And let me show it to you. Verse 17, please. And he told her all his heart. Come on down to the part of that verse that says this. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like who? Any other man. Now watch, watch this. The anointing on him made him different from any other man. Now the anointing that was on him was upon him. But the anointing that is on you is not only upon you, but it is in you. Now, this anointing that was on him, he said, if my head be shaven, I'm going to be weak and I'm going to be like who? Any other man. He calls any man that is not anointed Weak. Come on. Come on. I better come over here. Come on. Come on. Right. He is saying that anybody who doesn't have your Holy Ghost spirit power is what? Weak. You, you see, what the enemy is trying to do. <laughs> When God sends you for a task, he's not sending you based on weak. See, without the Holy Ghost, a person is what? It's weak. But once you've been filled with the Holy Ghost and have God's power not only on you, come on, help me, but in you. Now, let me show you how strong you are. Look at Judges chapter 15. And in Judges chapter 15, it says that verse 15, and he found a jawbone 
of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew how many men therewith? He slew. Now this, this is his physical ability. Oh, you got to see this. See, the, the enemy's job is to talk you out of your inheritance. He's, he's trying to make you act like you were never saved. And I decree from this meeting, you will turn into another man. You will turn into another woman. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A thousand men. That's called the thousand times more anointing. Yes. That's what he talked about in Deuteronomy of, of verses chapter one and verse 11. A thousand times more. That's that anointing. That anointing will make you a thousand times more. Yes. Yes. Let me give you another illustration. What it takes the world a thousand days to do, you're going to do in one day. Come on. <laughs> uh, just, just take the thousand. Now, I told you this meeting is going to be accelerated. It's going to accelerate your faith. It, it, you're here, and I prayed that this meeting will accelerate. You might come in here with no faith. You're going to leave out of here with some strong faith. When you leave out of here, you're going to be calling things that be not as though they were. You're going to be decreeing a thing, and it's going to happen just like that. Whatever the devil has stolen from you is going to start coming back. Why? Because the harvest in the last days is going to overtake the reaper. Who's Samson? Well, let's, 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 this is restoring your physical dignity. He's going to restore it. He's going to restore it, folks. He's going to beautify the church. Whatever's ailing you is going to have to go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That blood is going to wash your conscience and no more. I know you've been married 15 times, but you're still going to do the work of God. All right. All right. See? I know you messed up and was in jail and so forth. Doesn't make any difference. God's going to wash that mind clean. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, God. Yes, sir. Say amen to this. Amen. Makes no difference. Why? Because you didn't choose him. He chose Y'all remember when they used to have that sign of going into the military, they had the Uncle Sam on the picture say, I want you. That's what God is saying about you. I want you. Well, Lord, you be like Gideon. But Lord, you know, I didn't finish school. I didn't have this. My family is poor and I'm this and that and so forth. I want you. God does not look at your past. He's only looking at your future. Let's go to Gideon. Come on over here, Judges chapter six. <laughs> we got the devil where we want him now. I said, we got the devil where we want him. Everything Satan stole from you is coming back. Everything, everything. And don't you stop until you get it all back. Look at verse 12 of, of Judges chapter 6. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said, The Lord is with you, thy mighty man of valor. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> that is Gideon. Now, Gideon goes on down there. He begins to try to make excuses. 
for the Lord not be with him. And he said this, and verse 15, and he said to him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. I'm broke. I never went to school. I'm black. I'm, I'm brown. I'm whatever you are. I don't care what you are. I said you are a mighty man of valor. Hey. Come on. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. You see what he did here? He took the man that was most rejected and he put him on top. Yeah. Hello. Why? Because they used to say something in that old country church down in, Ellen, in Georgia when I used to go down in the summertime to, to visit with my grandmother and my, my parents would deposit us down there all summer. Yeah. I'm trying to erase that memory, but all summer. But they used to say something in that church and I didn't understand it then, but I understand it now. God is a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Ha -ha. Yes. He can tell folk what to think. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Amen. Come on. Amen. Glory to God. So here, Gideon's trying to find an excuse to not be qualified for what God wants to do. But I got news for you. Who God calls, he qualifies. Yes, he can drop that anointing on you. I said he can drop that anointing on you. And here in Judges chapter 6, look what it says in verse 34. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew the trumpet. Can't you see what I'm saying? See, all he needs to do is drop that Spirit on you. If he dropped that Spirit on you, your days of being mentally inept are over. You just got qualified. I said, you're going to work calculus like you had it before. <laughs> that came out of the spirit. See, he's going to lead you into things that you've never done before. That's what he knows. He doesn't want it to be you. Look at this scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 9. Glory to God. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 9. How many of y'all are with me? Look at chapter two and verse nine. He says this, and he will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent and darkness for by strength shall no man prevail. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't want you to use human strength. First of all, you can't defeat the devil in human strength. And what you do for me, you're going to have to do by grace. That here, human strength shall no man prevail. So forget that. See, he's going to give you an assignment according to his anointing. Not according to your human strength. Oh, man. Y'all with me? So I'm saying, I don't, I'm not sure what happened in your past or background or whatever have you, but yet, King's X on that one. Just know that God is now anointing you. But for you to step out in that anointing, it's going to take faith. Yes, sir. Come on, yes, sir. Let's go to another one. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Isn't God good? So now here is the prophet, Samuel. He's being sent to the house of Jesse. Glory to God. Now Jesse has some sons. And Samuel shows up and says, hey, I'm supposed to anoint somebody. Now notice what he's got. He's got a little vial of oil. He's supposed to anoint somebody. And uh, Jesse said, hey, boys, come on out here. And they came out, well built, kind of like Bill Winston. Don't hate, don't hate, participate. 
well built. I mean, been to the health club, working out, praise God, made A's all their life. Hey, Samuel said, uh, uh, these, these are not the ones. What? Uh, do you have any more sons? You got to always ask the right question. Do you have any more sons? Yeah, yeah I got one out there. He's a guitar player. He's keeping cheap. <laughs> Bring him on in here. I heard Justin say this one time. It just, I knew it was true. He said, David came in here. Hey, hey, what up? What up? What up? What, hey, hey, what up? What up? Give me, give me some, Samuel. Give me some. He's a musician. And what did Jesse, what did Samuel say? This is him. Jesse say, oh, Lord Jesus. I, Lord. But he poured the oil on him. Watch this. And the spirit of the Lord came on him from that day forward. Watch this. The very next verse says, then the spirit of the Lord lifted from Saul. Come on. You see, that's the difference between the Old and the New Testament. Come on. In the Old Testament, it'll lift from you. In the New Testament, he said, I'll be with you forever. Now, you can get the anointing not to function. And that can, you can do that. And that's what the enemy tries to do. Get you in strife, get you in racism, get whatever have you. Why? So the anointing won't function. It's on you. It's in you, but it won't function. I call it kryptonite. There was one thing that could weaken Samuel. I mean, weaken Superman. What was it? Kryptonite. See? Stay away from that kryptonite. On your best shot, somebody trying to pull you into an argument. Come on. <laughs> I say, hey, brother. Hey, brother. We okay. We okay. Why? Because you're going to have it the way you want it. Come on. Come on. Now, let's look at 1 Samuel. Oh, 1 Samuel. Let, are y'all with me so far? Yeah. So it's not going to be by your strength, not by might. Come on, not by power, but by your, my spirit, saith the Lord. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Now, uh, 6 verse 4. Oh, uh, 4 verse 6. Okay. Now, let's look at 1 John chapter 2. Is this the right bunch I'm talking to? I said, this meeting is going to be a turnaround in your life. See, you got to decree a thing. Folks, I was looking. <laughs> now, I want you, where did I tell you to turn? First John? All right, put something right there. First John chapter, let me see where I am. Hold it, let me see what kind of time I got first. Yeah, Shanda. I can do it. I, all right. He said, I can do it. I can do all things. Come on, through, through, through the anointed one and his anointed. There is nothing you can't do mentally, nothing you can't do physically. Come on. That, listen, even when Jesus said, feed him. And that's what the disciples said. Wait a minute. Now, 200 penny worth is not sufficient enough that we could even buy all of them just a little food. And notice what he was doing. He saw his problem in the way of money. See, see, see that? And Jesus said, one said, there's a lad here. He's got two fish and five loaves. He said, bring that to me. Bring it to the anointed. See, because if you're ever anointed, you don't have a money problem. Because all you need is seed. <laughs> it's going to multiply what you got. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y'all got to know, I just, I just appreciate this stuff. All right, now, now I want to show you this real quick. Look what he says in verse 20. First John Two, verse 20. I said I was going somewhere. First John 2, 20. He says, but you have an unction from the who? Holy one. And what do you know? What do you know? Oh, yeah, I see it up there. Okay. Praise God. Thank you. I, you, 
you know how many things? Oh. All things. You are a know-it-all. Yeah. All right. All right. I had no idea how to get those drug dealers off our block, except I went to the one who's got all wisdom and he's laid it up for me. I just downloaded it and gave it to her. She just did what I said. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Turn to Job. That's not Job now. That's Job. Job in chapter 32. Job chapter 32. Now in Job chapter 32, marvelous scriptures. All right, he says this. I'm going to read in verse, started reading at verse 6. Okay, verse 6. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. Verse 6. <laughs> okay. Uh, 44 seconds. Verse 6. <laughs> Put it up there on the screen. <laughs> okay. Verse 6. Okay. Job chapter 32 and verse 6. I thought they had it up there on the screen. Look what it says. And Elihu, the son of Barachel, the Buzite, answered and said, I am young and you are very old. Wherefore, I was afraid and dost not show you my opinion. Dost, we don't use that word today. <laughs> dost thou love me? <laughs> no. Okay. Look, look at verse seven. I said, days should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty giveth them understanding Great men are not always wise, neither do the age understand judgment. Therefore, I said unto you, hearken to me, I also will show you my opinion. All right. <laughs> okay, let's look over at that same set of scriptures in the message translation. Would you, if you have the message translation up there, oh, you got it? All right, I didn't call for it, but okay, come on up. <coughs> she knows the routine. All right, come on. I'm out of time. She got it. Boy, I'm telling you, these folks, y'all know me too well. Yes, sir. All right, here it is. It's right here. Right here. Yes, sir. Here's what I'm saying. This is what Elihu Son of Barakal, the Bizite said, I am a young man and you are all old and experienced. That's why I kept quiet and I held back from joining the discussion. I kept thinking, experience will tell. The longer you live, the wiser you become. But I see I was wrong. <laughs> there are some old fools. No, no, I, that, that's not it. That's not in it. That's not in here. I, that's it. Yeah. But I see I was wrong. It's God's spirit in a person. The breath of the almighty one that maketh wise human insight possible. The experts have no corner on wisdom. Getting old does not guarantee good sense. So I've declared to, I decided to speak up. Listen well, I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, now, I got a hundred dollars for you. You know the routine, don't you? You know the routine. Amen. Notice, just because they've been in the job longer than you, is not going to give them more mental power than you. Amen. That's right. That once the Spirit of God comes on you, He is going to enrich you mentally so that you can outperform anybody that is competing with you. And you're going to be like Daniel. God's going to raise you up. You're going to be like Joseph. You're going to be running the country and the company. 
I'm here to tell you, God's going to make a complete mental difference between you and the rest of the world. Get ready to be smart. Check it out. Notice, no, he's going to return your mental and physical dignity. Whatever's troubling your body, I didn't go into it today, but your body was designed to repair itself. You know that because you can just scratch a scratch and normally it'll repair. Folks, that goes for organs, goes for everything. Well, what has happened? We haven't had faith to activate the anointing that is in us to work through us. That's all I got. Give God a praise.